Hi. I'm Allison Cedar. I am an artist and I moonlight as a full-time working mom. Today I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of my art book collection that I have. I like watching other people's art book collections just for inspiration for different books to get that might be helpful in my art practice. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I have in front of me basically three different categories of books. I have um, like comic books and then instructional books and then inspiration books, art of books kind of thing. So I think since the smallest category is comic books, I'm gonna start there. I think I'm gonna put books that I haven't actually read all the way through yet last. First like set that I have is Bee and Puppy Cat. I love these. I just think like the art in them is just so cute. I love the Bee and Puppy Cat style. And then one thing that I found interesting about this comic book series is that um, in the books, they have little QR codes that you can scan. And then it's like music that's meant to accompany the book, which I thought that was a really cool idea. This is from the Cartoon Hangover Publishing Company and Kaboom. Um, so it's volumes one, two, and three. So it was a cute series. Kind of makes me want to read it again. This one is from an art YouTuber. I have been following her for quite a long time. I actually bought this from when she had an Etsy store, uh, but it's from Fran Nerd. And this is her book about to leave. It's about her and her, well now ex-husband Ed. Um, their, I think it was their first trip to the US or maybe it's like around Germany. It was their first trip outside of Chile. Yeah, Chile. Um, so that's this book. So I think it was maybe her first full comic book. She had done like smaller zines and uh, this was like her first like big one. I know she's working on another graphic novel right now. I used to be in a phase where I was really interested in making my own graphic novels, but I'm not super good at like writing stories. <laughs> Uh, like I have like ideas for stories, but it like it's hard for me to like really flesh it out and like tie it all together. I'm more like the big picture. I have the big picture concepts and like story beats. Yeah, I don't know if they'll ever come to fruition in actual graphic novel form, but I don't know, maybe someday, who knows. These ones are all books that I've gotten from various Comic Cons. I've got them at San Diego Comic Con in different years. This one is Run Wild. When all of civilization begins turning into animals, only two people remain, young siblings, Ava and Flynn. On a desperate search for their mother and safety, they'll traverse a wild and unruly landscape, make friends and foes of all species and discover what really makes them human. I picked this up because I was kind of flipping through it and I enjoyed the style. And this is a similar book by the same authors. Are these authors or? Yeah, same authors. Um, I don't know if they illustrated it, but they at least wrote it. Uh, so this one is called The Cloud. So the synopsis says, what is a wish? That is the question the boy must answer for himself as he and his loyal wolf, Cloud, embark on a grand voyage to find the boy's father and return the wish that was stolen from him. The Cloud is a beautiful and at times heartbreaking journey of a reluctant hero forced to outwit a cast of colorful characters, a thieving girl, bizarre creatures from the great before, and the Mad King. It's a quest of self-discovery where the boy le will learn that not all wishes can or should come true. The artist was at the booth when I got it, so they signed it for me. I feel bad that I haven't read this. Please don't tell them. Um, this is one that I got mostly for my niece and nephew, but when I tried to read it to them, they weren't super into it, so now I just have it, but I'm gonna read it. I will read it. Now that I have a child, maybe I'll read it with her. Uh, she would probably like it. So this one's called Spaced Out, the story of Phil and Mantis by Brett Bean. Kind of little space adventure, more geared towards like, I don't know, like older kids, like 10 year olds kind of age. So. That's that one. And last one, guys, guys, okay, don't come for me in the comments. I, I know, I know. I'm kicking myself that I haven't read these yet. Why, like comic books are so easy to read. Why haven't you read them? I don't know, I don't know. Life happens, things happen, I forget. I'm gonna read it, okay? Chill out. Avatar The Last Airbender, The Promise. If you don't know about the comic book series for Avatar, it's a continuation of the story after 
the series ended. And I think through these comic books, you find out what happened to Zuko's mom. It's multiple books. So these were originally published in smaller books. And this is like the smaller books compiled into a larger book. And it has like notes on the side of like, com basically like commentary from the artists and the, the people who made the comic books. And it seems like there's some extra, um, like behind the scenes stuff in the very back, so. Okay, that's all for the comic books. So now we're getting into the instructional books. Some of these are like business books, some of these are art books, some of these are history books. So it's kind of like, like a smorgasbord of different types of instruction. So this one is called Breaking into Freelance Illustration. Um, the Guide for Artists, Designers, and Illustrators. I read, looks like about a quarter of it. What I read, I remember being pretty good. It's been a while since I picked this up. I do want to finish it. I don't know, there are just so many books that I want to read and I read part of it and then I, you know, squirrel, shiny, new book comes around and then I start that one and then I never finish them, so. So yeah, that's that one. Seemed pretty good from what I remember. This is Impressionist to Early Modern Paintings from the USSR. So um, it's a compilation of, like it says, different Impressionist paintings from like basically the 1800s and early 1900s. So it's got artists in here like Cezanne, Monet, Renoir, Gauguin, like those kinds of guys. So the classics, I like to have these on hand to, um, you know, be able to reference their paintings in a way that like, um, typically like the colors are, are a little more accurate as opposed to if you were to go online. So, and then like, I can kind of inspect the paintings a little bit closer. So yeah, that's basically why I like to have these. Then we have Gardener's Art Through the Ages, volume two. So this is, um, this is an art history book that I was required to get for my art history classes that I had to take in college. Um, and this covers art history from, well, it starts at the 1200s and uh, goes all the way up to modern day. I do like to have this on hand. It's just nice to have like a reference, a little bit like kind of inspiration too. You know, sometimes you read somebody's story of what influenced them and what inspired them to make something and the different, influences like uh, world events that might have shaped their artwork and yeah I don't know it's just it gets me in the mood to create so um plus it covers like the impressionist era which is my favorite um art movement so I like to have like a more comprehensive information about that one yeah that's why I still have it this is one that I haven't really looked at that much to be honest but I have it I have it if I want to look at it and this is architecture form space and order so this just goes into the deeper things of architecture and I guess it kind of, I don't know, explains how to draw things, which can be useful. Like, like I said, eventually maybe I would like to do um, graphic novels. And so having some reference on how to draw buildings in a way that looks believable might be helpful. So that's kind of why I have this one. This is one that was actually given to me for my high school graduation. It's basically like a textbook on light and color and how they interact together. Um, it, I, every artist who does anything with color should read this book. So this is called Color and Light, A Guide for the Realist Painter by James Gurney. So this guy, he did like a pretty extensive amount of research into how light works, like literal wavelengths of light and how our eyes perceive those wavelengths of light and translate it into color and how that all looks different to our eyes and how you translate that onto um, a canvas or painting or, you know, in your drawings and things like that. So um, it's like a pretty in-depth book. Like this could be a textbook for painting classes for sure. And he goes into all sorts of stuff about color palettes and how to mix the colors and limiting your color palettes and all, all sorts of stuff, how to make your colors look a certain way and all that kind of stuff. It's a really good, really good book. Highly recommend. This is also one that if you plan on making any sort of comics or graphic novels or anything in that realm, you probably want to have these books. Um, so this is Understanding Comics by uh, The Invisible Art by Scott McCloud. So this goes into, this is a very easy read. I actually did read this whole one, believe it or not. Um, but it's completely in comic book form. 
And th through the comic book form, Scott McCloud demonstrates the theory of comics and how you can translate different things into comic form. So it goes into the history of comics, like on vases and Egyptian, you know, stories that were essentially early comics and how more realistic drawings reads to the to the person and how more stylized drawings reads to the per to the reader um, and how you can you know make things feel like it's taking longer or make things feel like it's happening very fast or um, how you can convey a feeling or a mood and stuff like that so all all of that is in this um book which is like a really really good book this is basically like a textbook on comic books Highly recommend. The next one, which this one I actually have not finished, um, but again, if you are planning on making any comics, this is a good book to have because it goes more into like the technical aspects of how comic books are made. So it goes into the writing, the, the story, the um, dialogue, world building, tools and technology, how that all, how it all like comes together. So this is like, again, if you plan on making any comic books, this is a good one to read. The other one goes into the theory of comics as a medium. And this one goes into, if you want to make your own, how to make them, how to make the story, how to make it all work. Anyways, this one, I kind of did some of the exercises in this book. But I just feel like for me, when I see examples of results of an exercise, it kind of influences the way I do the exercise. So I find it difficult to follow tutorial style books, which is why I don't really care for tutorial style books because I want to take in the information and I want to translate it into my own style. And not that I really have like a very specific style, but I want to, I want to interpret it my way, you know? And I feel like if there's too much input, then it influences my style more than I would like for it to. With that in mind, this one is called Creating Characters with Personality by Tom Bancroft. I think he was a character designer for like some pretty popular TV shows. But basically he talks about um, what makes characters interesting and he gives you exercises on how to like to help you develop your characters. I probably should go through the rest of the book and do the rest of the exercises probably a couple times. Um, maybe that's the key with like tutorial style books is doing the exercises a couple times. Um, but so that way you can really like solidify it and kind of translate it into your own style. But yeah, I mean, what I read of this was a good read. Again, like if you want to do anything where it involves like characters, then this is going to probably be a good book for you. So this one is actually a textbook that I was required to get for my sculpture class that I took when I was completing my major prep for my art degree. So this one is called Shaping Space and it's by Paul Zelen Zelanchi and Mary Pat Fisher. I actually really liked this book. I wasn't super interested in sculpture as a medium before reading this um, and before taking that class, but kind of reading through this helped me to appreciate the different elements of sculpture and made it actually pretty interesting to me. So if uh, you are looking to dabble in sculpture, maybe picking up this book would be a good idea because it can give you some context and, and can help you understand what makes sculptures good and what makes them work and, and stuff like that. So figure how to draw and paint the figure with impact by Sharon Pinsker. This is a pretty okay book. Honestly, it's more in the inspirational category. She utilizes a lot of negative space. And by negative space, if, you don't, if you're not aware of what that is, it's like all the space that isn't filled in. So she, she focuses and draws the most important things and leaves the rest blank, which it is effective, but I don't necessarily know that it's the type of art style that I would want to get into. You know, it. I feel like this is more in the vein of inspiration than legitimate instruction. She more just, it's almost like she's kind of summarizing her philosophies on her art style, basically. I would rent that one from the library. Now in my biggest category, inspirational books. I actually got quite a few of these from a neighbor who was getting rid of a bunch of their books. And when I saw that they had a bunch of art of books, I was like, Ooh, can I have those? And they're like, yes. So that's where I got quite a bit of these. They're all from movies that I really love. So this is the art of Ratatouille. I think that kind of speaks for itself. 
all of these books, they go through the um, process and how the movie was made and developed in the style and um, characters and world building and stuff like that. The Art of Cars. The Art of Finding Nemo. The Art of How to Train Your Dragon. Love that movie, it's so good. The Art of Kung Fu Panda. Those are all the books that I got from my neighbor. These next two are also books that I got from Comic-Con with the Avatar comic book. The Legend of Korra, The Art of the Animated Series. And then it says book one air. So maybe this is just like the art of the first season, which I do like the first season. Say what you will about Legend of Korra, but I do like the style and the world building of the first season um, and the second season, so. Avatar The Last Airbender, The Art of the Animated Series. This one, like it also at the very beginning kind of goes into the whole backstory of how the creators came up with the series idea and what it took to get it into development and things like that. So that's kind of a fun read. And the last one for a TV series or, or any animated series is Steven Universe. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually really uh, am proud of this one because it's a limited edition from Comic-Con, from San Diego Comic-Con, so that's why it has a sleeve. And then I have taken this to several signings to meet Rebecca Sugar and stuff like that. So the front page has a bunch of signatures from um, different cast members. So I've actually read a pretty decent amount of this one and it's a really interesting read. I really love the style of this show, so I appreciate the book. We stopped recording for a second, so sorry about that. I feel like you got moved. Did you get moved? So this one is The Art of Urban Sketching. I think I found out about this book from Teo Chie or something like that. Is that how you say his name? He is a urban sketcher. Um, he's very popular here on YouTube. I think this is how I found out about this book was from him. Um, so it's, it's a nice read. It's nice, like it has um, artwork from tons of artists all around the world, just on location, sketching the world around them and it's fun to look at. So um, good book for some inspiration and like a couple little stories and yeah. Okay, and then this last one is from uh, like an Instagram artist that I follow. I found out about her from her YouTube channel. She is a very popular illustrator. So she came out with an art of book, Rever Reverie. She's French, so I'm pretty sure that's probably not how you pronounce it. So it's the art of Sibeline Menet. Came with like a little nameplate inside. And I really like that it has um, pages in here that are like translucent or like vellum or something like that. That's kind of fun. I like that. Um, but yeah, so it gets all into her process and how she goes about um, sketching and planning and, you know, 
all the things. So anyways, that was my art book collection. I hope that you found it interesting. Maybe you discovered some new art books that you would like to check out for yourself. Um, that's pretty much all I gotta say. And I, I, I will read, I will read the books. Okay, I'll read some of them. Yeah, that's all, that's all I got. Anyways, in the meantime, don't quit your daydream and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.